Psychologies, we are live. And it's Friday. Oh, hello, Fatima, nice to see you. And it's, oh my God, what a week it's been. I don't know about you, I feel, I think I've aged 10 years this week. And I was going to talk about interviews and public speaking and authenticity, but, oh my God, I, I think we should talk about anxiety and how we manage visibility in moments where we feel really anxious because hands up this week I have felt anxious a quite a lot of the time and I suspect that's true for a lot of you and yet in this weird time that we're in we do this kind of thing you know I, I can be feeling anxious and then know I've got to do an Instagram live or for people at work you can be feeling anxious and have to log into teams with 20 people, or you might have to do a pitch, or you might have to do a job interview. So how do we manage moments of visibility and pressure, which are so important to our working lives, in the moments where also we're feeling anxious, we're feeling nervous? Now, I would love any questions about this. If anybody has questions about job interviews or pitches, presentations, anything where you feel you have to be visible in the next few weeks. Feel free to put questions in. But first, let's really just define what we mean by confidence. Because here's the thing about confidence. It, it, people assume that, you know, my job is a, helping people speak in public and on this kind of thing. And so I hear a lot of anxiety from people. They'll say to me, oh, but I'm not confident. Confidence really comes from the word faithful, fidere, to trust. And confidence means trust in yourself. It doesn't mean dazzling people on a big stage. It doesn't mean having a million YouTube followers. It doesn't mean any of those things. It just means trust in yourself. And the trouble with this time, the time that we're in right now, is that Blum and egg, trust in yourself can feel really hard when the ground is so blooming shaky. How can we trust ourselves when the whole world is, feels like it's on fire right now? Now, the interesting thing is that about 10 years ago, I went off and I interviewed A-list actors about confidence. And it became a book called The Star Qualities. Now, at the time, people said to me, A-list actors, why would a normal human being want to know about pretending to be someone else? And, you know, there is something in that, because we don't want to fake who we are. That, it doesn't work, does it? But, there's a big but, the thing about A-list actors, the thing they know is the thing that is really, really helpful in this time. Because what A-list actors know how to do is stay resilient in the gig economy, in a world that is constantly changing. Because if you're going to make it big as an A-list actor, the thing you have to do is accept the no's and bounce back. Because you're going to be told no for nine out of ten roles. You might not work for six months. You might worry that you're never going to work again. Any of this sound familiar to anybody? So in other words, actors for years have been learning the tools that can really help us handle this quite tricky time that we're in. And so I want to talk about a few tools that are going to help you really find your centre, your mojo, your inner power in a world which is slightly tearing itself apart right now. Now there's a really fundamental principle that I think we should start with, which is that if you start to feel shaky, often that shakiness comes from the brain. And the first tip that I learned from actors that I really, really find useful when I start to feel myself get a bit shaky, a few times this week that's happened, is something that the actress Hayley Atwell taught me. I interviewed her at the National Theatre back, you know, way back when. And she said, just before I go on stage, I think, 
I can feel the air on my face. I can feel the clothes on my skin. I can see the window across from me. And what that's doing is really clever. Because when we get into anxiety, you know, say you have to log on for a job interview, we can work ourselves up into a state. I'm not good enough. They're going to find me out. All of that stuff doesn't help you. That's your brain going over time. To quieten the brain down, it helps to come back to the gut part of the nervous system, the enteric nervous system. So one thing you can do is just put a hand on your gut. If it's on video conference, they're never going to know. And the other thing you can do is, is that Haley Atwell advice is to come into the peripheral nervous system. So the peripheral nervous system feeds information back to me from space. So Haley Atwell's advice, I can feel the clothes on my skin, I can feel the air on my face, that brings you into the peripheral nervous system. And welcome people who are just joining. This is Psychologies Live. It's so lovely to see you. I'm Caroline Goida. We're going to be talking about tips and tricks for anxiety in moments of visibility. It's worth saying, lovely Psychologies listeners and readers, that you can get a free copy of Psychologies if you go to the top of the Psychologies page and um, DM them. They will send you a free copy, which is blooming brilliant. So back, back to anxiety. Super anxious time, isn't it? I've had moments of, I would say, panic attack this week. And the first tip I use to really, literally bring myself back down to earth is to come into the peripheral nervous system, clothes on skin, air on face, feet on floor. So that's Hayley Atwell. Second tip was Minnie Drivers. And she said... There was a time as a young actor where she had, she just had no work and she really thought she would never work again. And she said, I, I, it was a, such a difficult time and it's, a, that, it's something that many people will be experiencing right now, this fear of will I work again, how will I get another job, something that actors have on, on an almost weekly basis. And she said, I would just come down to the three things, the three good things that had happened that day. She would say, I've been swimming. I've got 50 quid in my purse. I'm going to watch a film later. And those three good things, some of you may do that already. God, it can be useful just to come back to what you have. It's so helpful because as bad as it gets, if you have a loving friend to message, if you've had a nice dinner, if you've got a nice clean bed to go to bed in, there are still good things around. So that's Mini Driver's advice. Oh, and thank you, Tatiana. Lovely to see you. <laughs> I, I, I'm so sure that 95% of the people joining this right now have experienced some kind of anxiety this week. I think we would be... You'd, have to, you'd just have to have switched off the news completely to have avoided that, right? It's, it's been a week, hasn't it? Yeah, Money Mindset Coaching... Three things I have that I'm certain of. It is so grounding in this chaos, isn't it? And I mean, frankly, if you're living in a stable-ish democracy and you have a house and you have a car, you know, and we have the basics, we're lucky the most people on the planet. So there is really something about coming back to the, the grounding and deep breathing. I think we should do some of that right now. So can we all... Right now, and there was, by the way, there was a really good yesterday breathing tree did a session with Fern Cotton, which is really worth looking at later, but we'll do a little bit of breathing. So remember we talked about the enteric nervous system, the gut brain. It's, it's a really old part of our system. And if we can get our attention into the gut brain, we start to slow ourselves down. Now I was taught, right, this is a drama school secret. I was taught at drama school that you can breathe with your feet. Now, clearly, you don't have lungs in your feet. But why actors are taught this is that when we relax our feet, so just let your feet really soften into the floor. Whew, you might even stand up if you're sitting. Let the feet really soften and widen. And then imagine that you have um, really lovely 
a, a nose or pause that open on each foot and just let the air come in through your feet in your imagination. I mean, skin does breathe, right? But this is, this is a different kind of breathing. I want you to imagine that you can take in air through your feet. And the other thing that I was taught, now this, this is only for us, okay, psychology's listeners. I was also taught to breathe with my bottom. The <laughs> I know. The reason being that, well, I mean, maybe just put your hands at the front of your hip bones. And what you can feel, if you take in a nice, well, let the breath out first. Always good to breathe out first. And then wait for the breath to replace. Let it come in through the nose. Now, if your hands are on your hip bones, you might be able to feel that the the muscles at the front of the hip, the, 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 the flesh at the front of the hip just moves away as you breathe in because really the whole torso breathes in. And so when someone tells you breathe with your bum, actually when your body breathes, your bottom is affected by that breath because as the lungs fill, the lower torso has to be impacted. So breathing with your feet and breathing with your bum are two really good things to do if you hit anxiety. If you have a job interview, if you have to do a presentation on Zoom, just when you start, think, feet on floor. Think, I'm breathing with my feet. I'm breathing with my bottom. Maybe don't tell them that, but it will help you. So we're talking strategies for anxiety. Now I'm just gonna scroll back and check if there's any questions. Money Mindset, you're doing some really, really good things here. This is great. Um, feel free to throw me questions. We look, you look like you're happy at the moment, so I'm going to keep going with my actor tips. But if anybody has a job interview or something coming up and you want a bit of help... Oh, Debbie, thank you. When we get back to normality and we have to give a presentation in front of a large audience, would we be able to use these feet and bottom breathing techniques? Oh, yes, Debbie. I tell you what. If I have to speak to, you know, when we, one day we will get back to stages, won't we? And just before I walk out on stage, I think feet relaxed. And as I walk out on stage, I feel my feet on the stage. As I walk out in front of the audience, I feel my feet really soften. And I imagine that I have a dragon's tail. I know I'm beginning to sound a little bit crazy. What the dragon's tail does is it takes you into your spine. When we're anxious, we're like frightened cats, our systems are looking for threats. So anxiety, the sympathetic nervous system, is a very kind of external radar. It's looking out there for threat. And the counterbalance to that, hence the dragon's tail, is that you take yourself into your spinal column and you feel that you have a kind of almost Game of Thrones dragon tail that is going around the room you're in. And I can just feel, as I put my dragon tail on, that I relax. Because my body's getting feedback from the back of the system, not just from my eyes looking for threat. Now, by the way, that's why Instagram Live, I think, is quite hard. And I noticed myself... <laughs> doing a bit of a gaspy in-breath sometimes. I think the whole thing about staring at ourselves as we speak probably mobilizes the sympathetic nervous system. So if anybody has trouble with Insta Lives, I think there's something about the, the visual that takes us into fight or flight, the sympathetic nervous system. So if you have to do an Instagram Live, put your dragon tail on. I can feel it working right now. And insanely home, this would work for my daughter who's doing exams all this month. Oh, gosh, yes. Is she doing um, written exams or is she, is she being examined vocally? If you're doing written exams, definitely. I mean, I'm going to say this to my poor daughter who has exams in January. Just before you start the exam, Hayley Atwell tip. Air on face, clothes on skin. Feel feet on floor. Put your dragon's tail on. Yeah, a money mindset, we love the dragon's tail. It does give you personal space. That's a really good point. Now, another reason that I think 
we've all had a bit of an anxious week, is that we're all doom scroll. Well, I, I'm assuming your your psychology's listeners, you're probably way more centred than this, but I have definitely been doom scrolling. You know that thing? You pick up your phone and you look at the news and then you see a horror story about what's happening in the US or somewhere and you scroll through and you, the anxiety ramps up. Now, I think part of the issue with that is that when we doom scroll, we have tunnel vision because literally we're looking at a small phone. And for your body, fight or flight is about tunnel vision. You know, if, if I'm under threat, I am looking for predators, enemies, and my system is looking all around. We don't do that when we're relaxed. So I think the dragon's tail calming into the spine, finding that sense of space around you, opens up peripheral vision. Now you can open up peripheral vision consciously and it will calm you. And the simple way to do it, if anybody's seen Amy Cuddy and her TED talk, her power pose is wonderful for this. If you just take your hands, you can't see me. <laughs> I'm doing that. <laughs> I'm doing that with both hands. Just take your hands out to the sides and stretch your fingers out. Keep your dragon's tail on. Keep breathing with your feet. And see if you can get your hands in your peripheral vision. Got that? Now keep a sense of that space wide, even as the hands come down. Now you can probably see in me, but when I put my dragon's tail on, and when I open up my peripheral vision, I really calm down, I slow down. And it takes me off the kind of anxious speediness that staring into a narrow phone screen kicks in. So if you wanna overcome anxiety, feel your clothes, feel your feet, Breathe with your bum, breathe with your feet, dragon's tail, peripheral vision. Good. Now, just checking if there are any more questions. We've had some lovely ones. Yeah, money mindset's really, really good for overwhelm. I know someone who's a very expert neuroscientist, and one of the things I always admired about her is that on the back of her phone, she had a, a pause button. And she said it was just to remind her every so often just to stop. Because overwhelm speeds us up and life is very speedy at the moment. So I think just reminding yourself every so often to stop, to slow down is really, really powerful. Now, oh, am I, I'm still filming, that's good. Just running through questions, let's have a look. So the next thing to think about is what Ewan McGregor said. And I'm just going to do something funny with this. There we go. I think I tried to send you a comment, which is silly. The next thing to think about when you're getting anxious, you know, because of technology, because of the pressure of this horrible week that we're all in, start to accept the fact that you cannot be perfect in this Zoom, live, Instagram world. We try to control everything, but in fact, any performer will tell you in live performance, perfection, it doesn't exist. There's the performance you dream of giving and that you rehearse, and then there's the performance that you actually give. And Ewan McGregor was one of the actors who talked about this, and what he said is, he had been in a, a play at the Donmar Warehouse in London. And he walked out on stage one night and he was in the middle of a song. I think he was in West Side Story. And suddenly he went, no, Carousel, one of those big musicals, and suddenly he went blank. He forgot his lines in the middle of a song. Now you can imagine that going <laughs> blank, drying in the middle of a song is even worse than being in a stage play because there's a band and the band are going to keep going. So what do you do? And he said it was, it was just horrendous. And he walked off stage in the middle of the play, you know, it, for, for the, uh, the, everybody else was going off to have their drinks and all the actors were taking a moment. And he said he sat down with his other actors and in the interval, and he was—he just—he didn't—he couldn't go on. He—he di didn't want to go back on. It had been so horrendous. 
And one of the other actors, Douglas Hodge, said to him, what you have to remember is that performance is always a risk. There's always imperfection. You know, you'll trip over your words just like I have done. That's part of it. That's the joy. And the audience will always just want you to do well. They won't mind if it's imperfect. And, and for me, that's a really, really important lesson for all of us in this world right now. The best thing we can do is show up. Show up, be on time, be prepared, give your best. And if it's not perfect, just let it go. And, and that's lovely, Tatiana, it, the mentality of accepting imperfection. Yes, when you teach your students. Because actually, if anybody's ever been taught by someone perfect, there's something really alienating about perfection. And I know that if I'm learning yoga or, or qigong or something, if a teacher tells me about how they've got it wrong, God, that's helpful. Because I suddenly feel okay. I feel okay about being an imperfect, flawed human being. So I think really, you know, in line with what Ewan McGregor said, as soon as you hit any kind of live performance, whether that's a Zoom call with your team, whether you're doing an Insta Live, whether you've got a job interview, get as ready as you can be, and then accept what happens. And it was Kate Winslet who said something quite similar. She said, after you've done it, just let it go. Learn the lessons and then move on. Tatiana, this is a really good question. Regulating our system when we get choked up. Oh, yes. When you're talking about something that's personal and it's different from being nervous. Yes, I mean, this can happen. Where I have experienced this most with clients is when people are speaking at weddings or speaking at funerals. And God, they're hard, aren't they? And, and what I would say in that situation is practice the speech and practice the moment when you come to the emotion. And when you get to that emotion, is this is what actors are taught to some extent. You kind of, it's partly being in it, but also partly being above it, because what an audience don't want to see is you getting lost in emotion, because that's just worrying. We worry about someone who gets lost in emotion. And what a performer would say is, sometimes it's helpful to imagine just hovering in your mind, imagine that you're hovering above yourself, and that the emotion is at a distance, like you're a satellite up in space, looking down on that person feeling that emotion. And that just allows us to reframe it. And we, we lose that kind of emotional attachment to it and we step back from it. And when we step back from an emotion, that really helps us to speak about it without it overwhelming us. So just give yourself that distance. I hope that helps. And I think rehearsal is really powerful. Yeah, imperfection shows you're human, Fatima. That's so, so true. And, and I, you know, if you think of the speakers who you like to listen to, often they reveal a kind of imperfection. They're not those totally polished, filtered Insta faces. You know, I, I think where perfection is compelling is in flat visual images. I think as soon as video or audio or live performance are concerned, imperfection is really uninteresting. Imperfection in art is more interesting, isn't it? A perfect line in art is just not interesting. So really embrace that. So we've had Hayley Atwell's tip, come back to air on face, clothes on skin, peripheral nervous system. We've had that lovely tip from Mini Driver, acknowledge three things in your life that are going well. And actually, Anna Massey added to that, and she said, bring the people you love in focus. Because I think in this time right now, it can be so easy to give our energy and our attention to, you know, Donald Trump. He doesn't really deserve it, does he? And actually, if we can keep to Anna Massey's tip, the people that we love in focus, so good for your nervous system. You know, if I think about my little girls right now, I can feel that my parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest part of me, is engaged. 
So just thinking about the people you love can be a really powerful way to bring you back from anxious moments. I'm just going to scroll through. Oh, top tips. Thank you, Debbie. Someone who has started off really well and anxiety kicks in the middle of the speech where the mouth dries up and you get out of breath. Right. Love this question. Frequently, you will get the advice, have a glass of water. And that's really helpful advice because your mouth does dry out. So it's so useful to have a drink. But it doesn't get to the root cause of the issue because the root cause of your mouth drying out is that you've hit fight or flight. And fight or flight is impacting your body in a way that is sending all the blood flow to the bits that are going to get you to run away or fight. And it figures you don't need to talk your way out of the problem. So if you're someone who is getting dry mouth, the same tips apply. Let's go back to them. Let's relax our feet on the floor. Let's open up our peripheral vision. Have a sense of the space all around you. Let's imagine breathing with our bottoms. You Maybe you put a hand on your tummy. And anybody joining, you're probably going, breathing with your bottom? Breath drops low into the nervous, into the body, into the torso. And when you drop the breath low into the torso, it really helps your system feel safer. So just put a hand on the tummy. Feel the breath come into the belly. And the back and the sides. And feel yourself breathing with your feet, breathing with your bum. Now, Debbie, if you're someone who is getting a dry mouth in the middle of that Zoom presentation... Just come back to feet on floor, air on face, wide peripheral vision, close mouth, let the air come in through the nose. And that's going to calm you down. It's also going to stop the mouth drying out because often when we're speaking and we're gasping the breath in through the mouth, something that I do on Instagram Live because I'm having to look at myself, that's going to dry your mouth out. Close mouth, breathe a lovely smell. Let's all do that right now. Close mouth, breathe a lovely smell. And you can feel the air goes low and wide into the body and you feel much more relaxed. Do that one more time. Let the breath go out. Let the breath come in through the nose. So you could be speaking, Debbie. You're in the middle of your Zoom presentation. You pause at the full stop. You close mouth. You let the breath come in through the nose and on you go. That is the best way to overcome dry mouth. Good. Now, I'm just checking in on the feed. Yes, money mindset. The detachment can take the charge out of the emotion. Exactly. So to your question about how you handle emotional overwhelm, That moment of looking at yourself from a distance can help you. And then you can come back into association. The the two words for this are association and disassociation. So if you have to speak about something really emotional, disassociate. Imagine looking down on yourself from a distance. And then if you need to engage people, get people passionate and the emotion is safe to use, then really Feel the emotion, let it go through your whole physical system and your voice will be impacted. But know that you have a choice. And especially in moments where we're all feeling a bit of emotional overwhelm, sometimes just imagining that you can look down on yourself from space can really help give you a bit of distance. Good. Now, I keep trying to give myself a comment, which is not so good. Let's just scroll down. Yeah, imperfection, you know, we love seeing outcuts and bloopers because we relate to their humanness. Absolutely. And I think we all need to remind ourselves of that when we have to do something like this, when you have that Zoom presentation, when you have a job interview. The imperfection, when it's from a place of preparedness and readiness, is actually really engaging. And so sometimes we just need to be a bit kinder to ourselves. Because we would accept imperfection in our friends, wouldn't we, if it came from the right place? 
Emily, yeah, you do feel the pressure to be perfect. I think you're not alone. And I think, I mean, personally, I don't know about you, but I, I find that my perfectionism dials up in times like this. If I'm, if I'm anxious, if I'm feeling a bit off kilter, I am so much more likely to beat myself up. Now, Tara Moore, who wrote Playing Big, I love what she says on this. She talks about the inner critic. You know that voice that says, you're not good enough, they're going to find you out. That voice. We've all got that voice. She says that voice is basically fight or flight. Its intention is to get you out of trouble. And it would make sense that that voice would dial up in times of stress and difficulty. So if you're feeling a bit wobbly, yep, I am too, then if you start to notice that inner voice telling you that you need to be perfect and it's not good enough, the quickest way out of that is to center your nervous system. So yesterday, I just stopped. <laughs> I, I had Really, I had a, a, an afternoon, a working day, and I just thought, actually, I need an afternoon for my psychological health. And so I went to pick my kids up in the sunshine, and I turned my email off, and I noticed my breathing, and I just slowed down. And I think the more that we can just monitor how our nervous systems are being impacted by what's going on, the more we start to manage that voice of perfection. Because the voice of perfection, to Tara Moore's point, is all about fight or flight. Compete, be better, survive, you know, do better, you're not good enough. It's the voice of fight or flight. And watching the news, too much social media, all of those kind of things can whip it up. So sometimes you just need to say, stop. And that will really help you. Good. Now, I am going to round up quite soon. Yeah, we all love bloopers, don't we? Good. I'm glad you've enjoyed it, Tatiana. I'm going to round up. Yeah, I love that. We choose what our inner critic voice says is truth or trash. And I've heard a lovely version of that recently, which is that our thoughts are flowers or they're weeds. And what helps us is to grow the flowers and to pull out the weeds. And we can only do that when we have space and time to centre ourselves. So let's go back to the main points. A-list actor tips for dealing with volatile, uncentred, anxious moments in life. Feet on floor, air on face, ground feet. Imagine you have a dragon's tail. Go into the back, not the eyes. Have a sense of peripheral vision. Be grateful for three things you have in the world. Bring the people you love into focus. And take a moment to breathe with your feet, and if you like, breathe with your bottom. Yeah, and finally, money mindset, bang on. Minimize the media, they thrive on a scarcity mindset. I could not agree more, amen. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm Caroline Goida. I'm in the middle of creating a video course to help you with all of these kinds of things. So if you like the sound of it, just DM me on Instagram and we'll send you details. And if you like psychologies, who doesn't, it's fabulous, they will send you a free magazine if you go up to the top of the psychologies page. What is not to like about that? Thank you so much for all your wonderful engagement. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. It's made quite a difficult week and really lovely. So thank you. See you very soon. I'll be back in December. You're wonderful.